Jesus still get look with mercy and grace. It's good to know. Thank you, Lord Leader. Give God another hand praise. You may be seated if you can. I know God is a good God. And I know God don't never make a mistake. All we got to do is hold on to his everlasting hand. And know that God is a good God. Coming out of the first, coming out of the book of First Peter, chapter 2. My message is gonna be: Are you really ready to change? First Peter. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. That tells us what we got to take off and put away and not let it enter in again. Those songs were very strong, powerful songs. But I asked the little leader earlier, I want her to sing that song when I was going through some things in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Sister Mac, McNeil used to always, and they have her to sing that song, and it break everything loose in my heart, mind, and soul that I can get up and stand and praise God, because it's good to know Jesus Christ as your living God. See, when you put your hands in His hand and don't take your hand out of His hand, you can make it. Yes, the ups and downs and, and whatever you want to call it, failure and falling, it's going to happen. Yes, sir. And you know why this happening? Because we are on planet Earth. Planet Earth going to be destroyed. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And he's going to give us a new place. But let me show you what Peter said. Peter said, wherefore? Wherefore, it, it telling us, wherefore, lay aside some, a little bit of malice. Ain't that what it's saying? It said, lay aside a little bit. No. Lay aside one. He, he, he said, lay aside all. That means you got to bring everything that negative and not of God out of you. Hello, somebody. And all God and hypocrites, and envy, and all evil speaking. Hello, somebody. Uh, hello, Bishop. Yeah. Even Bishop can't be sitting around here. Evil speaking. He said, oh. He said, lay aside all of it. See, when he said, lay aside all of it, you got to kill flesh. Amen. You got to kill that was causing you to have God against someone else. Amen. You got to kill that that causing you to be mad and upset at family members. You got to kill that that have you to be mad at your hub or mad at your wife. Come on, somebody. Because when you mess around and let that slip in, the enemy comes in and bring other garbage. Yeah. And see, when you can kill it before it starts, you can be victorious in Christ. Yeah. I put on these glasses, but I should have worn my other ones because they're going to look down. They fall. <laughs> See, God trying to tell us something here today. <laughs> he said, as newborn babes decide a similar milk of the word that they may grow thereby. When you first get saved, you ain't going to be no prophet. Come on, now. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Come on, now. Come on. You, you ain't going to be no bishop. Come on. You ain't going to be no pastor, Come on. teacher, and all that. You got to work up to get where you need to go for God to give you the gift to overcome the issues that going to face you. Amen. But high and high, I told that sister right there in the ministry that how you go when you're dealing with deliverance and dealing with demonic, you're going to go through. Because you got to have the right spirit, the right power in God to overcome it. Yes, you ain't going to just get saved and then talking about calling out demons. Them demons going to laugh at you. <laughs> Jesus, I know. Paul I know, and they're going to come out and make a tail of all their clothes running down the street naked. Amen. Just like they did in the Bible. Amen. You can't play with Satan. Amen. 
Amen. You got to come bold before the throne of God and come against Satan. Amen. You ain't going to get saved no year and talking about you going to whoop Satan. Satan laughing at you. Come on, man. You got to sacrifice. Because he said, oh, did he? I didn't say it. He said it. And he, he went on and said, if so be ye have tasted the Lord is grace. See, so see, you want to play with God. You step in a little bit, God bless you. You lay hands on somebody that gets saved. Then you want to say, I know more than the bishop. You lied. Your proof ain't in you. Come on. Just because God used you one time, that don't mean you outrank Bishop Robinson. Come on. Or any bishop or any pastor. Because God gives us a measure of faith. Yes, he does. Hello, somebody. God working on a lot of us. Amen. God still you working on Bishop. Y'all ain't talking up in here. Amen. Bishop got to stay dressed right dressed. Amen. Bishop got to stay before the Lord. Bishop got to fast and pray. Bishop got to hear the voice of God. Right. Look what he had me to write. See, are you really ready to change? Seriously. You need to take this. This is my second message anyway. Totally different. You can ask anyone when you get up out of here. I didn't have to preach the same message. Because God have equipped in me, man, something that you all won't ever believe. There's some power coming out of this one. Y'all ain't talking. Out of this verse, there's some power. And if you don't want to believe it, I, all you questioners. I'm not ashamed to show you. I'll show you the message I preached this morning. And you can look at that one this evening. Y'all ain't, and I wrote this at the house. Y'all ain't talking up in here. I want you to hear me, Facebook. Y'all think this a joke. Y'all think I'm a joke. But I want to show you what God said. God wants to ask the believer today, do you want to change or come out of your faults? Your faults? A lot of us got faults. Come on now. From the pulpit all the way back down to California. Come on. People got faults. But they don't want to change. They don't want to come out of it. Well, I've been like this and I've been burned, and I'm going to stay like this. Well, stay on like that. Hell is your home. Because you don't want to come out of what you're in. Hello, I wanted to come out of selling drugs. I want to come out of being mischievous. I want to come out of being cheating. Y'all ain't talking up in here. You're looking at me funny. Last night you heard her speak. But here, here what does said the Lord today. It ain't got nothing to do with last night. It got something to do with today. Last night is gone. Today is today. You got to want to change. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what demon you're facing. God done showed me everything now. And I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to knock Satan's slam out. I dare you. I dare you to come up in my house and take the... I'm in charge of this house. I'm the big boss up in here with the help of the almighty God. Amen. And you got to let the devil know that you're the boss of your house. Amen. Your house is your soul. Your house is your body. Your house is your praise. Your house is your lifting up and having faith in God. You got to tell the devil. You got to stop surrendering things over to him. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. See, we let him have his way too much. Come on, then the word of God said, listen. God see all things in your life. And the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the door of your heart waiting for you to change. Come on now. Why do you think so many people 80, 90, 100 years old before they leave here? God giving them mercy and grace to the change. Amen. But why do you think a lot of these young kids are leaving the earth? Because they're disobedient. Amen. The word of God says you ain't supposed to be disobedient to your parents. And then it ain't going like this. You ain't supposed to be disobedient to your pastor. Because then you disobedient to God. Amen. Now you might look at the pastor and the bishop as a fleshly man and woman, but they've been called by the most high. And if they tell you something, you need to stop getting offended and just get right church. Many times I got rebuked. Many times I got slapped side the head by pastors I was up under. I didn't leave the church. I didn't get mad. Amen. I didn't go home and pamper them I ain't going back. Y'all ain't talking up in here. You see what the devil did to the United States just Friday? It wasn't had nothing to do with the Nancy Pelosi. It was God used Nancy Pelosi to do what she done. And God opened the government back up. While we ain't giving people the person or nobody the credit, I'm giving God the credit. Because without God and without Nancy Pelosi, they still yet to be locked down. 
they still won't have no job to feed their children. But there was a lot of them that when they opened it back up, I bet they were partying in the party house. They were getting it. Oh, I'm going to eat now. But there was more than five in that one million that were crying out to God. And God saw his children cried out, going through, and he opened the door. See, when God sees us going through, he opened the door. Man might not open the door. Woman might not open the door. But God opened that door. Now, now, see, now this man got to be ridiculed because a woman came up and rebuked him. They wasn't that woman, it was God in her that rebuked him. In other words, the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. Michael came with the report while Gabriel had him locked down. Y'all, 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 that's too heavy. That's too full out there. See, Gabriel had him locked down, arguing and busting. But Gabriel wouldn't let him go no further than what he's supposed to go. So when Michael came, Michael came and said, all right, I'm here now. Boom, sit down somewhere. Shut up over here. You're going to listen to me. Gabriel, go on and take what you got to take to the world. But everybody look at that. Now the brother, they got him. Stop giving men and women the credit. Amen. It's God. Amen. Why do you think he wake you up every morning to go to work? Amen. Why do you think he give you good life, help, and strength? Why do you think he give you a mouth to talk? Come on, sir. I give credit what credit is due now. He used her to do his will. Yes, he did. Hello, somebody. Yes, he did. But people taking it out of turn yeah. to get that demon in that other person all upset, and then he go right back and do the same old ignorant, stupid stuff he did before. Right. Now, why I give the devil credit? Yeah. Why I give the devil talking about, hey, you know, the 15th of February going to come, but I guarantee you that government ain't going to close. Amen. Watch it. Watch him pray. Watch it. That was just a th throw you off case. See, everybody in the hole, he going to close the back on the 15th. See, you just spoke it. Amen. Why are you speaking things in the atmosphere? He said, get rid of all things. He was speaking. Didn't he say it? Why we got to bring evil speaking out of our mouth when we supposed to be saved, sanctified, holy go filled, and fire baptized and speaking in tongues? You better go check yourself. Amen. You better question now. You really say you sanctified and holy go filled, fire baptized? Because we ain't supposed to be speaking any nakedness out of our mouth. Amen. We ain't supposed to be partaker in any nakedness or any evil. Come on, somebody. Amen. Then he said, "Saints, we cannot hide." A run from the anointed of God. You can't run from God's anointed. Mm -hmm. Whatever God got for you while you're on this earth, ouch, you're going to do it or you're going to pay dearly. Amen. John Willie Robinson Jr. paid dearly. 2008. Y'all know. Because I didn't want to come up here and preach to the people and tell the people the gospel. But God had another plan for John Willie Robinson Jr. Y'all ain't talking up in here. And I never will forget that. The seven weeks I sit there with pain and suffering, but I never will forget that when I had to go to Dr. Radden Church and preach her, you know, a, a, a revival for her, you know, appreciation. I got home the next day, Pastor was going to work, and I was sitting in my rocker, rocking. I had just got out of the Word. And the Spirit told me, John, I'm looking around. Well, ain't nobody supposed to have been there but me and Zaire. He said, John, rise. Go to Newberry. I jumped in that shower. Y'all ain't talking up in here. I freshened myself up with that water wash. I put on my clothes. I had that old boat Cadillac wide open. Coming to Newberry to find a place. Y'all ain't talking. The reason why a lot of people are going through, the reason why a lot of people are not seeing their nothing come forth, because you running and you hiding stuff in your heart, and God wants you to bring it out your heart, but He can use you in this in this state. He can use you into this territory. Newberry is you all territory, saints. And you got to be you. That's why he said, Are oh, you really ready to change? You can't go to work cussing and busting and want to slap somebody side of the head because they say you're working too slow. Just as it, excuse me, excuse me, no, I need to go to bed. 
Lord, please help my back, my legs, my knee. I, I need your help. No, you want to sit there and no. argue. Well, what you mean I'm slept? You ain't doing this job. I'm doing it. Uh, could you go to the office and punch the clock? Then there you go. The devil, the devil ain't did nothing. You did it to yourself. Keep your mouth closed. That don't make you less a person because you, you, know, you know somebody rebuking you. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Lord knows I wish he could have showed you all the rebuke I got. A lot of y'all won't even be in the church. You've been on left the church. But God said, are you ready? Really ready to change? It's a change come about when you get in God. Hello? See, the Holy Spirit is, the, is a comforter that will lead and guide us to be righteous. That's the Holy Spirit, guys. Seek ye the face of God through the Holy Spirit. Seek the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will keep you Lead you and guide you. We need that. This flesh, you can't be led nothing but fussing, cussing, and all. But in the Holy Ghost, you'll hold your peace. In the Holy Ghost, you'll swallow your pride. In the Holy Ghost, you'll turn to the wall and say, Lord, I thank you. But in the flesh, here you go. Channel 19, got you. I'm sitting down at the house. Boop, boop. Breaking news. So and so just slapped the husband and cut him on his throat. You already stepped down. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. So you said you get up in him preaching and teaching that you got the Holy Ghost and you don't slap and cut your husband's throat mm. or cut your wife's throat. You already stepped down. They don't need you calling me down. Well, you know, uh-uh, you, you go ahead on. We're going to pray for you. We're going to make sure we pray for you. But no, you, you, you can't hold an office like that. Come on, somebody. Not even a bishop, pastor, or anybody in the five, four minutes. You have to go into a council. Amen. Hello? Amen. There was a man. He was preaching, tearing up ministries with the power of God. And I'm not going to call his name because he was very powerful. Repent! He said, repent for the glory of the almighty God. But social media got behind him and caught him in a red light district. And everybody here know what a red light district is. And it's two-seater steamway. That's why I wouldn't buy no steamway. I got rid of that two-seater steamway. I got a two-seater two Mars. I'm going to go on to Ted Rob to send it on to, you know, Fresh Can Heaven. I'm not going to put no money in. For what? To sit at the house like the mother said? God want us to prosper. In doing for him, right. not for us. That's right. That's right. But they said, no, we got to sit you down for a while. Because, you know, this hit, hit, hit social media all over the news. People were picking at me and Brother Walker over in Germany. But we used to walk around and he had this big boom box. Repent! Repent! And the boys standing up and went, shut up all that. We don't want to hear that. But when that breaking news come out, I said, bro, what's going on? Don't, don't play that today. <laughs> won't you, I said, won't you hold up? I said, won't you? I said, hold up. I said, hold up, man. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. I said, hold up, man. Hold, 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 hold up, bro. He said, brother, I said, no, old brother, don't play that today. Just, they look at, hey! See, you always got them small demons out there. Mm -hmm. Hey, rip him! Rip him! <laughs> I said, bro, Walker, don't say nothing. Don't I said, come on, keep walking. Don't say nothing. <laughs> see, see, see. You got to be real. <laughs> you got to be real when you're dealing with Lucifer. You can't come at Lucifer in the flesh. You got to come at Lucifer in the spirit. And you got to make sure it's God talking, not you talking. Hey, hello, somebody. There you go. <laughs> Keep walking on. <laughs> but see, just as soon as everything got over with, maybe about a month. See, we forget things within a month. Hello, somebody. You know, because when God touched people, he touched them to bring them out of something, don't he? Amen. He touched them to bring them out of their sin. Come on, somebody. That's right. I had many of them come to me and say, sorry, brother. I'm hard. Hard? 
I said, I'm hot too because it's hot over here. He didn't know that ain't what I'm talking about. I said, what are you talking about? I'm burning. I said, well, go, go to the doctor. See, see how stupid I was? I said, go to the doctor. I'm burning though. I said, well, go to the doctor. He said, I can't go to the doctor. I'll go to the doctor. They're going to put me out there. I said, oh. I said, what you want me to do? Can, can you help me out? See, see, see what I'm saying? They knew who Zach didn't come to when hell hit their door. Y'all ain't talking. I said, look now. Enough is enough for this now. Give me this now go on about your business. Amen. Hello? Amen. Came back three months later, they put him out because he came back hot again. See, you can't ask for forgiveness and, and ask God to help you. Then three months later, you do the same thing. Hello? When he came to me and I saw him, I'm on my way home, I said, bye. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> he got a freebie. And he didn't, uh, he didn't want the freebie. In other words, your analysis. I know a lot of y'all looking, what did he do? Your analysis. He hello, somebody. See, he got a freebie from a man of God. Y'all ain't talking up in here. And the boy came from a wealthy family. I said, your daddy got all these business, you up in here. And I'm, I said, oh, I want to call him that word. We call, they call us. You was about one stupid rascal. You think I would have come in the army and my daddy had five business and they prospered? No, I wouldn't have came in on United States Army, y'all. Hello, somebody. <laughs> my daddy was a millionaire. No, I wasn't going to come in the army. But see, I needed discipline. I needed chastisement. I needed correction. My daddy was chastising that flesh on general. And I was getting tore up from the float up. Hello? She got whoopings along with me. My mama did. I run to her, boy, he still yet cutting that old. And my mama tell him, will it sell her down? Y'all ain't talking. Amen. See, that's what God do to a lot of us. Amen. He tell us to sell her down and stop this and stop that. He don't want people to see you. Yo, 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 wrong because they're going to hold that against you till you die. Yes, I don't care what nobody else say in yes, here. Yes, if, if somebody fall in sin, or, or you and your wife get a divorce, or you and your wife, she got a man and you got a woman, they ain't going to never forgive you. I don't care how much you repent and ask God for forgiveness. They're going to hold that yes, because of this flesh. Come on. And I tell them all over the house, 60, 70, 80, Nine hours of bad boy. Amen. I said, but in 80, I got changed. Right. 1981. And I asked anybody in here, even my mom, in 1981, what do you remember of me? She can't tell you nothing, but he was in the army. Him and told that and them kids going all over the country. That's it. That's it. But family members, Oh, he, back in the 70s, he was a dog. All he did, ran the street, shooting at folk, smoking dope, running women. See, family, family members will mess your walk up. Hello? Because they don't forget. And you can forget about that forgiving. They don't forget. If you don't forget, you ain't going to forgive. That's why the Word of God came and said, oh, hello? He said, lay aside all malice. All God, hypocrites, envy, and all evil speaking. That's why the word came and said, lay aside all of it. He didn't say some of it. Y'all right. pushing me, I got to move on. <laughs> we must look at these five verses coming from 1 Peter 2, 1 and 5. We got to not fall into the devil's trap. You'll fall into it, saints. Yes, you will. If you don't stay in this word and pray, and fast and call out to God every day. I'm saying every day. Because right. when you miss one day, he coming. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. If you don't pray, he coming. Mm -hmm. You don't read that word, he coming. That him. Right. Hello, I know what I'm talking about. Yes, once we have tasted his goodness. See, once you have tasted God's goodness, you ought to be able to fight it. Right. I am saying single and married. Stay into God's hand. 
because we're going to have ups and downs. As long as we live on this earth, you're going to have ups and downs. I don't care who you are. You could be the Pope. You're going to have ups and downs. Hello, somebody. Jesus did, and so are we. You read and study the history of Christ. His ministry didn't start till he was 33 years old. No, 30. And his ministry didn't last for three years. 33, they put him on the cross. So see, when you really are anointed of God and really doing what does say the Lord, why do you think Martin Luther King didn't live long? He lived four years after he got, come on, 1964, 68, Martin Luther King left this earth. Hello? If I'm right about it, it's yep, 68. And he just didn't take Martin Luther King. He took the two Kennedy boys. See, the devil don't want peace on earth. And it's not going to be peace on earth. Stop crying out for peace, peace, peace. Because it's not going to be saints. But prepare yourself to be ye ready. When he come back, you can leave with him. See, we're supposed to be in preparation, preparing, and living the righteous and godly way until Christ come back. We shouldn't allow anyone or anybody get us out of the wheel. And my wife tell me, look, I'm going to leave you. I got me somebody. Well, leave me, honey. I'm not going to go out here and talk about busting no man or shooting no man about no woman. Hello, I've been married to her 46 years. Hello, somebody. We've been there, up, down, all around, so ain't we? That's it. We sit at home and laugh and joke about things. Amen. You can go on that dinner. I said, you go on in there. I said, I tell you what, you get your clothes and go on, on the other side of the door. She said, huh, you the one going on. I said, matter of fact, won't you get your stuff going on up there with Ann? I said, Ann, uh -huh. I said, I'm paying for this. She said, no, I'm paying for this. <laughs> and we leave things alone, don't we, honey bun? Yeah. We going on. She look at Steve Harvey and I look at my Western. And when she come up in the house, Come up in the room, I say, hey baby, how you doing? I'm already on change, sweetheart. Hello, somebody. See, you got to shame the devil and he'll flee. But the word said, resist the devil and he'll flee. It's all right that you have a little have a little talk with your mate. Have a little argument, but don't just don't get carried away picking up bricks, picking up guns, picking up knives. Hello, somebody. Because that ain't gonna help. See the jail cell already full. Yeah. Thank God for my wife. So we see here, I am saying, lay aside anything that's trying to destroy and mislead you to do wrong and fail God daily. Lay aside it. Don't let it destroy you. Hello, God trying to tell us something. Then in verse 3, he said, To whom coming as unto a, li a living stone, that's Christ, this is a lot in these of men, but you but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as a living stone are built up a spiritual house. See, you got to build up a spiritual house, saints, and a holy preacher to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You got to offer up something. Yes. When you stood at the altar and said, I do for rich or poor or sickness or health, what happened to them by? When you stood up and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me, help me, deliver me. What happened to them by? See, we got to understand, you have made vows to God. Not before people, well, see, I got saved now. They're going to stop talking. I don't care what they say about me. As long as I know it's not true. As long as I know I'm walking in God. We got to stop letting people put us out there like we are nothing. We are somebody in Christ Jesus. We are royalty. We are a pure in Christ. We are royal and pure in Christ. We are royal. And see, you don't let nobody take your royalty. You hang on in there. You won't go through a little bit of something, something on earth. Because the earth ain't, ain't going to be here no more. Ask them one that I preached this morning. You're going to see fire coming from heaven. 
burning up cities and burning up countries. Where are you going to run to? He said the whole universe is going to be on fire. So how are you going to run? <laughs> you can't run from God. You can't hide from God. Either you're going to accept the terms and get it right, or you're going to burn with the rest. Because the word of God said, the righteous, oh glory, hallelujah, said the righteous is going to be caught up. See, Jesus is not even coming back to earth. He said he's going to meet you in the cloud. So what they tell you, he ain't even going to put his foot on, because he, he, he's going to burn this earth up. He's going to burn this nation up. He's going to burn this universe up. He said he's going to give us a new, a new, we ain't going to have to worry about no uh, house notes. We ain't got to worry about no car notes. We ain't going to have to worry about going to school and paying all those money to get an education. See, all that going to be wiped away. It ain't going to be no more there. But see, if you think you're going to walk the earth, see to the, you know, that's what a lot of people think. Well, when I get on my sick bed, I ask them then, who to say you're going to make it on your sick bed? You can play if you want. Where is your work? Because he said, if your name is not written in that Lamb Book of Life, you're going right with Satan, going back to hell. And he's going to put a lock on it and burn it up too. So see, everything going to be gone. So what you going to do, saints? What you going to do, believers? What you going to do, Christians? You got to get it right right here. Because you ain't going to enter any eternal talking no more to Christ. I'm grown. You can't tell me what to do. I know you might be God, but I can do what I want to do, God. Uh -huh. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> That's exactly what you're going to do. Hello, you're going on talk to God like you talk to me in the past and other and your mom and dad. And see what God's going to do. Depart. That's all he got to do. He ain't got to do my thinking. you gone. <laughs> you be burning for the eternal. Eternal means forever. This stuff is not a joke, y'all. People think it's a joke. People think it was, you know, a joke to put one million people on a hunger street. That's not a joke. They, 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 they have young children don't know where their next meal coming from. They have a father that's been working, taking care of his family, don't know when he's going to get a paycheck. That ain't no joke, y'all. I ain't laughing about that. That bothered me. I don't know about you all, but that bothered me, and I prayed every day. That something should open up. I said, Lord, please, Lord. I beckoned with God because that could have been us. Yes, Hello, somebody. You all got to start praying and stop. It's all this. It's all right to look at social media. It's all right to look at television. But neology and praying to God with faith and belief is the best remedy on earth. Yes. People don't want to listen to that. People don't want to believe that. But that's why I'm here today where I'm at. Because of neology, because of faith, and because of love and compassion in Christ, that's why I'm standing before you to tell you that there's nobody but Lucifer that causes these issues in our nation through, through that man that says the president. But see, God had to send a savior. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Go, go, go. See, you didn't see none of the bishops or pastors going to him and telling him that because he had a staff. And that staff he had, they were informing him that ain't God. And it wasn't right. See, we got to watch what we say and pray. But we should have been getting together all together regardless of what denomination or what we are serving and coming from and went and talked to that president and tell him that Satan causing all these issues. Not a little old country preacher like me speaking over Facebook telling. I mean, if I could see it, the mega church of bishops and pastors should have saw it. It's nobody but Lucifer. It's nobody but Satan that caused this issue. And he can use this old bishop if bishop lay down and let him use it. That's right. But you got to be able to rebuke him and come out of it. Right. Wherefore, lay aside all. You got to lay aside all this stuff. Stop speaking of your kid. I got a bad thing. I'm tired of her. I'm tired of him. Uh oh. <coughs> Satan just hurt you. There it is. I'm tired of her doing this and that. There it is. She coming back in the house. She ain't coming back alone. She bringing something with her. And little never here, boy, he ain't bringing nothing. He, he ain't bringing nothing, but he putting it in somebody else's house. Amen. See? See, that's how the devil use our young kids. 
because we speak in the atmosphere. I told Josh, John, Mel, Lord, and Krista, I said, hey, you all can have what you want. Can't no man tell you what you can't have. Yeah. I said, James Eddie didn't do it. John Willie Sr. didn't do it. And John Jr. never be the weak link. And you don't have to beg nobody. Oh, my children worked. Y'all ain't talking. When they got of age, they got out of that house with the working. Y'all ain't talking up in here. Y'all ain't talking, see. Don't get mad and upset at me because I'm bringing it across the pulpit. I told them, you either going to work or you going to work around the house. You going to do something. And oh Lord, no, they weren't sitting at home on Sunday. And they weren't sitting at home on no Wednesday. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. That dog was never going to ride in John Willis Jr. house. And you were eating from my table. Now you can mumble, you can complain. Well, I can't hear, but if I hear you, strip! Whoop! Whoop! That's it. Discipline. You spoil a child when you don't discipline. And that, that the word of God says you don't love them. That's right. If you don't discipline your child, God, the word in the word says you don't love them. When you let them have their way. I had to whoop little Zoe the other day. They, they were shocked. They said, oh, did you cry? I, no, I ain't cry. I whooped her. Ask mom. I kept telling her. I said, stop Zoe now. I didn't have to say but one time to my kids. I said about ten times to her. I said, man, I ain't got to take this. Y'all y'all ain't talking. I said, man, this is it. This little chap. And I went to get, go up there to get my best. She went running up in the room and see what I was doing and caught the run back. I said, you can't go nowhere. Because the doors is bold. She had a little cover over and I took that cover. I went through the cover. Y'all ain't talking. And when I got up from up under the cover and I sit it over in the chair, I grabbed a little arm, I put it over in the chair, and I popped that fat part. She's she sitting there like a little camper. <laughs> hey, can I get something to drink? I said, yeah, I can get something to drink. What you want? <laughs> Y'all ain't talking. <laughs> See, you, you, got to, you got to be the parent and not the child. Right. Hello, these kids now, man, want to be the parent and ain't got job first. <laughs> and you feeding them. Hello? Ambition? You just don't understand. I ain't stuck about the government. The government, they, all they're doing is building jails and prison for our children. The, the prison is increasing because there's no discipline on earth. Amen. Back when I was coming up, it was a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. You better not do nothing. Mm -hmm. Your granddaddy, grandmama, your mama and daddy, sometimes the uncles and aunts will whoop you. Mm -hmm. Man, you get tore up but when I was coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Coleman was real nosy. <laughs> We'd be at the house. I'm closing. Yes, I'm closing. Miss Coleman stayed next up, and her granddaughter Ruby was here on table. That man walked up there and said, Hey, hey, who are you? Get on the way from John's and the in house. Well, they ain't there. What you going up in there for? People looked it out for people. Amen. But now you see people run up in there. Pow, pow. I ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing. Yeah, I'm asleep. She right. I heard and I got up, but they were gone when I got You better stop all that line. Because your house could be next. Hello? Take me home, Josh. See, I didn't come to bore you. I didn't come to beat you up. I didn't come to beat you down. I come to tell you it's time for us to listen and hear the word of God and obey the word of God and walk in it. Amen? Amen. I mean, we all, you know, we we gonna make mistakes along the way. Now, now I, I can't sit up here and stand up here and tell you, you gonna make mistakes, but come out of them. Get with a good, strong prayer partner, not a gospel, not a tail bearing, not a he say you say. Get with somebody that really gonna roll and rock and roll with you with Christ, and get a breakthrough. And if you marry, get with your mate. If you sing them. Call on God and say, Lord, I need a prayer partner. I need some help up in here. This stuff getting rough. Women call women, men call men. Hello, somebody. But sometimes, you know, it can get a little personal. I don't want to hear your, your love life. Y'all ain't talking. That's how the devil move in on bishops. And women go to talking all kind of love life. 
Hello, somebody. Then your wife ain't around, then next thing you know, well, I'm going to be at the church at 12. I'll be there, they'll be there waiting on me. Y'all ain't talking. And see, privacy come to bedroom, bedroom come to church. Then that come to divorce. Because you didn't listen to God. But see, you, you, got, you got to believe this. If you're going to see Bishop Robinson, Pastor Robinson ain't got no job now. And everywhere Bishop go, Pastor Robinson's going to be right there. If she ain't got an 82-year-old woman to sit back there, Amen. I'm going to have me a witness. Amen. You ain't going to suck them in. See, ouch. See, I got bit once, but I won't get bit twice. They say, I'm not ashamed to tell you. People will bite you. People will mess up your walk. People will tell you anything. And then they'll go out and talk about you. Well, his wife wasn't doing that, so I helped out. What kind of junk and mess is that? So you see what I'm saying? Brother, stick with the one you got. Hello, somebody. Hello, I sleep now. I got peace now. I got love for the one that's been beside me ever since I was 17 years old. Y'all ain't talking. Yes, I made some stupid and dumb mistakes. Yes, I fell by the wayside, but look at God. But God! But God! Hello? And that's the way we got to think. Stay into your feet.